Well, here I am at Anfield. It's a bit noisy, mainly because they're building the new stand just over there. And there's a road just there. But as you can see, I'm at the cop end. And I thought I'd take this opportunity to talk to you about a constructive trust case. Not one of our common intention constructive trust cases, but a case which is an example of a constructive trust being used where there's been a breach of fiduciary duty. So this is sort of an introductory piece just around how we might deploy constructive trust, or indeed not how we, but how the court might deploy constructive trusts generally. So this case is Regal, Hastings and Gulliver, which is a very interesting case. It's about an entertainment venue, not like Anfield here, but of course about a cinema. Uh, and of course it's the Regal Cinema in Hastings, which is the case that we're considering. In terms of the facts, briefly stated, they're these. You had a parent company that had one cinema. It decided to expand, so we, uh, locally there were two other cinemas that it could expand and use uh, if it could subsidise a subsidiary company to the tune of £5,000 to acquire the leases of those subsidiary cinemas, uh, those two other cinemas, or if they would guarantee that sum of £5,000. Well, the directors of the parent company said that the company itself did not have sufficient liquidity to be able to supply that financing, particularly capitalising the entirety of the subsidiary company would take the lease is of those cinemas. But what they did have, or what they said they could do, is supply half of the capitalisation themselves. So half comes in from the directors, half from the subsidiary, and as a consequence, we have a goer. That means the subsidiary can go ahead. We have an amorphous group of the Odeon Cinema type thing. Oscar Deutsch entertains our nation. But here it's the Regal in Hastings. So this subsidiary is then sold on uh, and the new shareholders and directors analyse what had occurred in the past. And of course they query this transaction. They wonder whether or not in fact the parent company was sufficiently liquid. If in fact the directors have just made a profit and a profit that they should account for to the company as fiduciaries, which is what directors are, uh, a species of, uh, of fiduciary. Um, so uh, goes up before the Chancery Division who hold that there was a breach of fiduciary duty and that those directors should account for the profit as constructive trustees to the company. So they do hold that profit. It's a very strict application of the rule in Keach and Sanford because without that injection, what's to say that this amorphous Odeon group wouldn't have existed? Does it stymie commerce? On that point, we'll perhaps move to Goodison, although perhaps not. As you can see, I have allegiances um, to discuss another case, IDC and Cooley, which touches on that issue and the deployment of the constructive trust by way of introduction. So from here at Anfield, I'm just off to meet Jurgen Klopp for a bit of lunch to discuss tactics um, for the coming season. I will say goodbye. So on that point, point goodbye. Goodbye.